Hi, 7th grade. Welcome back. Uh, today's Friday. And today we'll be uh, finishing up uh, the religion of Judaism. Um, on, uh, next week, we'll be focusing on Christianity. And the week after that, we'll be focusing on Islam. Like I mentioned in class, in order to understand Islam, you have to understand Judaism and you also have to understand Christianity because they do heavily influence um, Islam. So before we do any any work, we're going to focus on the exit ticket. So which prophet led uh, the Jews out of Egypt? The answer to this was Moses. Uh, Moses comes after Abraham. Abraham is the one that makes the original covenant or pact with God. Uh, he moves to Canaan. And then uh, the, the, the Jews have to leave Canaan and go to Egypt. In Egypt, they are enslaved and then they are led out by Moses. So Moses is the one that... Uh, leads the exodus uh, from Egypt. Why did God ask Abraham to sacrifice his son? Uh, to prove his loyalty to God. God wanted to, to test Abraham to see if he was the one that he can trust. Um, the Ten Commandments are found in the Torah. The Torah is also known as the Old Testament. They are not found in the New Testament. They are found in the Torah. Uh, the following map, uh, the map, a number of you guys are getting this map, these, these, these maps confused. So this map is um, Moses leading the Hebrews or the Jews out of Egypt. Uh, this is where he, the Jews are find themselves in slaves in Egypt. And this is where he, when he leaves them, leads them out of Egypt. Um, what's another word for covenant? Covenant is an agreement. Agreement between between Abraham, between the Jewish people and God, that they will only honor the one God, and in, and in return, He's gonna give them the promised land. He's going to bless them. According to the Torah, who made the first covenant with God? It was uh, Abraham. Abraham is the patriarch, the original, um, the original um, uh, person that God made that connection with. Why did Abraham destroy the idols? This came directly from your text from the documents. He believed in one God, not idols. He believed in only one God, not multiple gods. Uh, what is the name of the holy uh, Jewish uh, Jewish book? It's called the Torah. Uh, it is called the Torah. And which of the following is the name for uh, Abraham's people? They are the Hebrews. Uh, most of you did a really good job here. Uh, the only issue that I saw was when I see um, answers that are like, for example, where it says Abraham, Moses, and, and Torah, you have to actually give me something more than that. Like, what about Abraham? What about Moses? What about Torah? Uh, for the most part, you guys did pretty well. Uh, this person said, I mean, like, I already know most of this. So, like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure that there was something that you learned. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with this kid. Um, so, yeah. So, just, again. Please put effort in, into your work. Uh, like I said, today we're finishing up uh, Judaism. So I'm going to go over uh, a couple things that I already talked about. Uh, so you might already know. So the Torah is the book of the Jews, right? This is the, the where the um, they have their history and they have their, their beliefs. And it is divided into separate books. Um, Genesis, if you know Genesis, Genesis means birth, right? Or creation. So Genesis is a chapter where you find uh the story where god made um if i can find it here where god made the universe god made the earth where god let's block this out where god made uh uh the first man adam this is god and this is i believe is eve this is a very from a very famous painting that you'll have to know eventually but not right now um so that's where Genesis is. Genesis also focuses on the story of Abraham and the sacrifice of Isaac. So this is Abraham. Isaac. And this is Gabriel, angel Gabriel. Um, so that is... That is that one. I don't know why, why I put this picture here, but it's uh, it has to do... I think it has to do with the creation. Oh, I, oh that's the Great Flood. So that is also in Genesis. I believe it's in Genesis, the great flood, where God floods the world. And then um, 
we also have so this is creation creation of world of the universe of man woman exodus it talks about it's another chapter exodus is when moses frees the jews out of egypt uh and also when so this is when moses frees jews out of egypt and exodus also talks about the ten commandments because on the way to the holy land God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, which would be the ten rules that reinforce the covenant between God and the Jewish people. Um, I believe this is the, yeah, this is Exodus. Again, I just got this out of the internet. This is Exodus. And this is the Ten, what are the Ten Commandments? Here are the Ten Commandments. So the Ten Commandments also are part of, of the Torah. Uh, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, um, they have other uh, other stories of the Bible. I think King David is in here, uh, Solomon is in here, uh, but we're not going to go too much into it. But you do need to know this one and this one. Those are very important. Um, so the Ten Commandments, we talked about them a little bit already. Um, they reinforce the belief that God wants from the Jews, that there is only one God, that uh, the Jews will not make any images of God. Um, don't say God's name in vain. Or don't say it just because you want to. Remember the Sabbath? I don't remember exactly what day that was for Jews. For Christians, I think it's Sunday. Uh, for Jews, I think it's Friday to Saturday. Honor thy father and mother. Don't kill. Don't commit adultery. Somebody asked me that this question today. I think it was Abilene. Uh, adultery simply means uh, if you're married, don't go and, and cheat. That's exactly that's what it means. Don't steal. Um, don't lie. That should not bear false witness. So that means just don't lie. And then the last one is don't desire things from other people. Don't be. Uh, I'm, I'm not coming up with the, with the word, but don't don't desire things that you know when you see someone's car, you're like, oh, I want that car. Like, oh, like be happy with what you have. So those are the ten commandments. Okay, I know you see other images here, and I'll get to them, I promise. So, again, Abraham is the original prophet. He has two kids that you need to know. One is Isaac, and the other one is Ishmael. This one is um, with his wife. He has his, this one with his wife, and this one with his uh, slave. This is, uh, you might think that this is uh, insignificant, but this is important later with, his, uh, with Islam. Um, according to the, to the Torah, God asked him to sacrifice Isaac, right? Um, but you'll see that with Islam, it's, it's different. It's, it's completely different. So that's, um, Abraham is the original prophet, the patriarch. He is important in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Those three religions are actually called the Abrahamic religions. They're named after Abraham. That does not mean that he's the founder. I, I don't. I, there's a distinction there. He's not the founder of Christianity. He's not the founder of Islam. Uh, but the ideas of monotheism, of the covenant with one God, goes back to him. Uh, Moses is also another uh, in, incredibly important prophet. He's another prophet. Uh, led Jews out of Egypt. That event is known as the Exodus. And he also received 10 commandments. He also received the 10 commandments. Okay. Now, and then we get to this idea that the Jews have been waiting for a Messiah, a Savior. Someone that's going to bring peace. Someone that's going to bring them together. And... And this is where things become different, right? There is, uh, I should have included Jesus here, but the Jews are waiting for their Messiah. Messiah means simply means Savior. The Messiah means Savior, and they're waiting for this Messiah, right? They're waiting for this Messiah. Um, around the year 
30, 33, 30, we don't really know exactly. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. There's a man named Jesus. And Jesus is Jewish. And he begins to develop a following of people that say that he is the Messiah. Right? There's a following of people that say he is the Messiah. But many Jews do not accept him as a Messiah. So you have this, you have this thing here. You have Abraham, and his followers are known as Jews. Right? They're known as Jews. Um, and then something happens, and they're waiting for the Messiah, and something happens. Right? Then here we have the Christians. The Christians follow the teachings of Jesus. And they, but Judaism continues, and they're still waiting for their Messiah. Right? Both of them, both Jews and Christian, they both use the Torah or the Old Testament. But Christians also add a new book to it. They also add the New Testament. So Christians borrowed heavily from Jews and then add the story of Jesus. And that is known as the Bible, the whole, the Christian Bible. Okay? So to summarize, the Jews are waiting for their Messiah. Around the year 30 CE, so 30 years after zero, a, a Jewish man begins getting a following that people say is the Messiah. And he is crucified. And so forth, right? The followers of Jesus become known as the Christians, right? There's people that don't accept Jesus, and they are still Jewish. They're the Jewish people today. Uh, the Christians have a new book, the New Testament. The Christians have a New Testament that talks about the the life of Jesus, his his miracles, his life. Uh, these books are actually written after Jesus' death. But you see how Christians use this as well. This is the Torah. But they the 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 Jew the, the Christians call it Old Testament. This is actually just the Torah. So the Christians use the Old Testament, also the Torah, and the New Testament, and this is known as the Bible. So again Jesus is seen as the Savior, as um, as the Messiah by people, and he is accepted as as the Savior, but not by everyone. The people that accept him become Christians, and then they write their stories in a book called the New Testaments, but they also borrow the stuff that Jews were already using. That's why, for example, I was raised a Christian. When I went to church, I learned everything about Adam and Eve. I learned about... Uh, uh, Abraham, I learned about Moses, Ten Commandments, not because I'm Jewish, but because the Christian people borrowed the Torah. They put it together with the New Testament and made it the Bible. Okay? So, so Christianity is made up of the Old Testament, and the New Testament. The Old Testament is also known as the Torah. Christians don't call it Torah. They call it the New Testament. Okay? Christianity is a religion um, heavily influenced by Judaism and uh, believe Jesus is the Messiah, Son of God. Jewish people today do not see Jesus as being important. Uh, and, and this is like a, a little thing, but that's why Jewish people don't celebrate Christmas, because they don't think that Jesus is the Son of God. He is not an important figure in history and religion, right? Christians do. Christians celebrate Christmas because they think that this is the time that Jesus was born, they want to celebrate his birth. Uh, Jews don't. Jews are still waiting for their Messiah. Okay? 
Um, I know I know that was a lot, but I wanted you to understand the connection between Judaism and Christianity. They're similar, but they're also different. And the biggest difference is the role of Jesus. The biggest similarity is that they both share the Old Testament, that they share the same stories of Adam, of the creation of of, of the creation of um, the, um, Abraham, Moses, Ten Commandments. But there are differences. Okay, um, we're gonna focus more on these differences next week, and um, yeah, I will catch you guys later. Bye, guys.